I'm Aaron Wolford. I'm Jonathan Romero. My name is Justin Kohler. And I'm Sierra Camacho. We are Team 21073, Regulated Medical Waste, Recycling, and Disposal Facility, with our sponsor being the University of Arizona's Department of Chemical and Environmental Engineering, and our mentor is being Harry Patton. Medical waste production is growing continuously with the population, and it's a problem that has been managed over the years and will be continue to be controlled to keep public safety, health, and prevent environmental issues. The medical waste often contains material that will be safe to recycle and reuse with proper treatment. There are a few facilities nationwide and none in Southern Arizona that extract recyclable materials before disposing of the waste. This project aims to create the first regulated medical waste recycling and disposal facility in Southern Arizona that is both profitable and successful in the long run. The facility was designed to store, sterilize, shred, dry, and separate incoming medical waste. After separation, the end product will be sent to a recycling facility, landfill, or to an incineration site. To accomplish these objectives, we designed a process that incorporates over 20 different pieces of equipment. I'll begin with a quick overview of the entire process. First, the bins full of waste arrive at our facility via box truck. The bins are separated into two types, yellow bag waste, or infectious hazard waste, and red bag waste, or biological hazard waste. The yellow bag waste bins are sent to an area of the facility where they are stacked on pallets, wrapped in plastic, and stored in a refrigerated room for up to 90 days before being sent to a specialized incinerator. The red bag waste is sent to a machine that will empty the contents of the bin into a cart. The bins are then sent through a wash and dry cycle before being sent back to medical facilities for reuse. The waste itself inside the cart is sent through an autoclave where it undergoes a sterilization followed by a drying cycle. It is then sent to a shredder which deposits the waste onto a conveyor belt. The conveyor belts lead through a series of mechanical separations, pulling out the paper, plastic, and metal from the waste. Those recyclables are compacted and sold to local recycling facilities. The rest of the waste is sent to a landfill. In area one, the red bag waste bins and yellow bag waste bins will be received off of the 20 foot long Mitsubishi Fuso 180E box trucks labeled TR101. The full red bag waste bins will be sent to the red bag waste bin emptier, which will empty the bins into the empty autoclave carts and then sent off for sterilization. The empty red bag waste bins will be sent to the bin washer, which is labeled W101. There, the empty bins will be washed, rinsed, and then sanitized with a deodorizing solution. Then the wet and sanitized bins will be sent off to the dryer, which is labeled D101. And finally, the dry, clean bins will be stored and sent to our customers at a later date. Here we have area two designated for yellow bag waste packing and storage. After arriving to our facility, yellow bag waste bins will be placed onto pallets and then wrapped by our pallet wrapping machine. Using a forklift, we will transport the pallet wrapped yellow bag waste bins into our refrigeration unit. The refrigeration unit will run from 32 degrees Fahrenheit to 40 degrees Fahrenheit by law. This is where we will store the yellow bag waste for up to 90 days before we send them off to incineration. Area number three is where the red bags will go into the autoclave carts and follow the cart tracks to an automated system that will place the bags inside an autoclave to be sterilized for a required amount of time. Once the cycle is done, the automated system will move on to dump the red bags with an emptying machine into a shredder to optimize the separation stage. Here we have area four, designated for material separation and compacting. After a red bag waste has been sterilized and shredded, the material will follow our conveyor belt systems into our two main separation mechanisms. The first one is an air sh shark separator that will, de that will remove the paper and plastic fraction from the metal and unrecyclable fraction. The second separator is a magnet separator that will separate out the metal fraction from the unrecyclable fraction using a strong neodymium magnet. Upon all separation, all the material will be collected in the collection containers before they are sent into our compactor. The compactor will bale our paper, plastic, and metal shreds into small cubes before they are sent out to recycling facilities. The unrecyclable material will be sent to landfills. 
Within our design, there was one piece of equipment we had to modify to suit our purposes. That piece of equipment is the autoclave. We made two modifications to it. The first is the addition of a refrigeration cycle within the autoclave system. This allows us to use the R113 refrigerant to pull excess heat from the steam escaping the autoclave and to give it to the water entering the autoclave, reducing our energy need from 490 kilowatts down to just 90 kilowatts while the autoclave is running. Additionally, we turned the autoclave into a vacuum drying system once the sterilization cycle is complete. We do this by adding a large pump to the outside. This takes just 30 minutes and removes 93% of the moisture from the medical waste we've just sterilized. Once we'd finished designing the process, we made a floor plan to show what this would look like were it actually to be built. To do this, we used a 100 by 100 square foot building, or 10,000 square feet. A few things of note on our floor plan are the refrigerator, which was sized to hold 90 days worth of yellow bag waste based on our expected incoming rate. There's also the autoclave cart tracks, which were designed so that carts never have to leave the tracks and can be set to the side when they are empty. There's also areas set aside for the full red bag waste bins, as well as the clean red bag waste bins. Also for the compacted recyclables and the unrecyclable waste that we will be shipping out of the facility. Finally, there's also an office space in the upper right hand corner, which includes a work floor bathroom so that dirty workers can go in there, shower, and change into clean clothes before heading home and before heading into the clean area of the office. Our team's design of the facility meets all the shareholders' objectives laid out. It operates safely, efficiently, and sustainably. Our facility operates safely, not only by following all of the regulations set out by the Arizona Department of Environmental Quality and the Environmental Protection Agency, but it also is designed so that the operators handle the waste as little as possible. Through both efficient design of the autoclave and recycling as much as 25% of incoming waste, the facility operates very sustainably. Combining both the drying portions and the sterilization portions of the autoclave saves as much energy as we can, and recycling the waste is a very sustainable effort. Our facility will be profitable after about 10 and a half years. This is attributed to our monthly revenue about being $148,000, which is made up of half of recycling sales and about half of charges to customers. Our operating costs and liabilities are about $99,000, which is mostly due to labor. Finally, our total capital costs exceed $4 million and are mostly attributed to land purchase, which is about $3 million, and then purchase of our major process of equipment, which is the autoclave, refrigeration unit, and the trucks. All in all, our facility will be profitable, operate sustainably, and operate safely, meeting all of our shareholders' requirements, and we thank you for your time watching this video. We would like to give a special thanks to our mentor, Harry Patton, as well as other fellow associates, specifically Neil Benegay and Scott Nation, for all the help and assistance they provided us the entire year. We would also like to thank our senior design professors, Dr. Adriana Brush and Dr. Kimberly Ogden, for assisting us and supporting us through the entire academics of the year. We would also like to thank the Chemical and Environmental Engineering Department here at the University of Arizona. We have not made it this far if it wasn't for your support.